Hello INTPs and friends of INTPs, C-Note here. My name is Christian Rivera. I am a multimedia designer and creative calibrator. Today I want to talk about INTPs accessing joy. What does that really mean? Uh, for INTPs, we are typically seen as incredibly serious. Um, we are very logical and straightforward, and a lot of the stereotypes you'll see around INTPs perpetuate that. And one of the things I want to help you guys to work through is to get past a lot of those stereotypes. And one of the easiest ways for you to start get, getting past that stereotype is to access joy, or at least express joy. Because as an INTP, you have so much joy within you. And I think you can often be surprised by the amount of joy that you can bring to the world through your thinking. And Sometimes other people in your life can be surprised pleasantly by the amount of joy that you can bring. One of the ways that you can start to practice joy is by going to an improv class. Now that's gonna be scary, you're gonna to have to put yourself out there, but getting into a place where you have other like-minded people, especially people who are also typically beginners at this and trying to do something new in terms of accessing joy and just being funny and letting go, is you're just going to be around other people that are experiencing this for the first time and that's going to that's going to ease some of the burden of that within yourself. So find a local improv class that can allow you to access that sense of joy. Also there's a book called Joyful. I forget her the name of the author. Uh, Ingrid is the first name of the author and um, in that book it explains in a curious way, a curiosity around joy that stems to the origins of, of primal responses to joy. And typically that involves natural light, that involves some being in spaces that give you a sense of joy. So being surrounded by color, I've got uh, the rainbow thing up here in the background. Surrounded by color, you know, wearing colorful clothing, wearing um, or, or going into situations where you're going to experience abundance of something. That's why we love ball pits as a kid so much. Like there are just so many of these, uh, the, these little uh, uh, plastic toys all up in this, this big pool that we just dive into and we're surrounded by this harmonious abundance of stuff. There's, there's something to that. That's why we like confetti so much and sprinkles and stuff like that. Like there are just so many of these little things that you can appreciate and, and uh, appreciate the joy of or a sense of harmony. We love when things are in synchronous with each other. So like you think of like can-can dancers like moving their legs in, in harmony, you know, like <laughs> it's very satisfying to see that sort of thing happening in movement and motion. And then uh, another specific hack is finding circular objects like this mirror in the background surrounding your space, your the places that you love to go or going into spaces that have more circular objects. Round objects are typically associated with play and basically getting yourself into situations where you can play more and play with other people. I don't mean just video games, which video games can absolutely bring a sense of joy, but I mean in the outside world because extroverted intuition requires getting into the outside world. And that is something that we can help translate the, the things that we enjoy about video games, about the things that we enjoy doing uh, in our internal space and bring that or seek that out in the outside world. And those are just some simple ways that we can access joy. Now, this is a super short video because it's just, you know, it's a pretty straightforward and to the point thing. And I'm still reading the book Joyful. So as I learn more insights, I'm going to apply it to the course down below, bit.ly slash cosmic INTP, all lowercase. And you can check that out. That's going to be a series of 45 minute segments where I'm talking in depth about my own personal experiences of accessing joy and, uh, and other topics in relation to this. And I guess another thing I can share about accessing joy is, is about getting out there into the outside world and like being willing to explore places that you've never explored before. So even in your own city, there are probably nooks and crannies and places that you've never been to that you would appreciate if you just, you know, took the time to explore and see if that's something that you would personally appreciate. So, um, 
uh, for me, I've, I've personally traveled across the country twice. I've been to at least 34 states in the country and in the United States, and uh, I've been to London and, and Paris. And you don't have to go to any kind of extreme like that, but if there's the opportunity to road trip to an interesting museum, or even just go to an interesting museum near you, or see if there's an interesting place uh, in the next town, you know, that involves a little bit of travel and it involves going to a place that you've never been to before. Those are some things that can kind of kind of help you access joy. And another thing too, when I was younger, I used to just go to like Walmart and play with the toys <laughs> as like, you know, something that, um, you know, when you're a kid, you're kind of looking for spaces that you can have fun in that don't involve drinking. Cause you kind of assume that you can just, you know, the only fun thing that adults can do is go drinking, but go literally just go to a toy store and start playing with stuff. You know, there is a place called box lunch here in Rochester. And I'm sure some malls around the country have it as well, but there are just nerdy things left and right that you can play with and look at and appreciate uh, with all of its nerdy splendor. Or you can just go to a comic book shop and appreciate all of the color surrounding you in that sense. Or just go shopping and find some things in your space that give you a sense of joy. You know, like Baymax brings me a lot of joy. <laughs> I love having him around. I have all sorts of uh, figures and things in the background. You probably can't see it in the frame right now, but I've got things kind of around uh, my apartment that bring Molly and I a sense of joy and we just love it so much. It's just, it's such a pleasure to come home and it's a pleasure to, to wake up in this space. But then it gives me a sense of the spaces that I wanna be in outside of this space as well. So just something to consider when you're trying to think about accessing joy and you know when you start to feel naturally depressed especially when you're by yourself it could be as simple as wanting to get outside now i know mental health is not something that simple but that could be a good place to start that if you're trying to figure out how to get out of a rut to ask yourself is it physical mental or environmental to and sometimes that environmental space is like, maybe you're not enjoying the space that you're in. I'm gonna put Baymax down. <laughs> maybe you're not enjoying the space that you're in and you need to make some visual upgrades around your space, or you just need to get out of your space and go experience some sense of joy somewhere else with some people that you love and appreciate, or go find new people that you love and appreciate by going to an improv class, by going to comic book shops, by going to stores that you appreciate, or going to museums for things that you might appreciate, or just hanging out at a coffee shop and striking up conversation with the barista. You don't have to do anything crazy, just say, hey, How's it going? Everything going all right today? Yeah, I know that there's a lot of crazy customers, you know, make it a little bit of small talk. And then, you know, you can be honest and say like, I was stuck in my house and I felt like I needed to get out and I just wasn't appreciating it. And I really love this space. This is really great. I love being here, right? So just be honest about your expression and that kind of, uh, that'll lead to more joyful interactions with baristas and people that can like, kind of almost commiserate with your experience in a way. <laughs> you know, a lot of that's really interesting on its own. So um, I appreciate you guys for being here. That's basically it. So again, bit.ly slash cosmic INTP, all lowercase. Please like and subscribe if you like this video, or you can go check out my podcast at dopamine.life, also linked below, where I talk a little bit more about mental health and creative calibration from a personal development standpoint, not just about INTPs, but I wanna help INTPs here on YouTube. So if you have any questions, comments, how do you find joy? Let me know in the comments below, what do you do to, you know, to make things better for yourself? And I mean long-term happiness. I don't mean short-term things like alcohol, drugs, sex, and things like that, which like sex is great for that too, for accessing joy. But, um, but in terms of long-term joy, what are you doing to fulfill a sense of joy within your space, the places that you go, and the people you surround yourself with. Let me know in the comments below, and I'll catch you next time on Dopamine. See you guys.